Welcome everyone to Ask the Avloid Virtual, Inlet, Virtual Instructor Lake Training Program, PEMCO Continuous Hinges. My name is Guy Robinson, and I will be your virtual instructor today. During the course of the program today, if you have any questions, you'll notice the Q&A tab on your toolbar. Go ahead and ask a question, and either myself or one of my teammates in attendance will answer the question. If there's something that we can't answer or that needs further clarification or you think of something later, you can always email me at guy.robinson at asaavloy.com. That's G-U-I dot R-O-B-I-N-S-O-N at asaavloy.com. Within 24 hours of today's presentation, it will be available on record. It will be recorded and available for viewing again. Also, if you log on to your Ask Avoy Academy login and you can view your transcripts, you can actually print out a certificate of attendance for this one hour for this class. Now, by the end of this lesson, we hope that the student will be able to choose the correct hinge for different type of openings, analyze the difference between gear and pin and barrel hinges, apply continuous hinges to an opening, explain their choice of continuous hinge, and recognize the different types of continuous hinges by their design. Why do we need continuous hinges? Well, it's quite simple. Due to the laws of gravity, there is, a, there is generally more load and stress concentrated on the top butt hinge. The top hinge bears about 70% of the weight of the door. Also, over time, <clears throat> excuse me, on hollow metal doors and frames, the reinforcement weld plate tends to break. Also, concentrated stress on the hinges and breakage of the reinforcement plate can cause the door to sag from the top lock edge down. This causes doors not to shut properly, which adds undue stress to the door hardware. And in the case of a fire rated opening, that opening will be non-code compliant. Another cause of hinge failure is when doors are open past their limit. This puts an undue force up, up to a thousand pounds on the hinges. It causes loosening of screws, distortion of hinge leads, and damage to the bearings. Now, continuous hinges. Continuous hinges distribute weight evenly, thus reducing wear and tear in the door and frame. They allow for, line, for aligning a door in a sagging frame in an aftermarket situation. Also, by, re, by removing the gaps around the door, it increases security and reduces vandalism. No, once you put a continuous hinge on, no additional reinforcement of doors and frames is required. Hollow metal doors come with hinge reinforcements. However, they are not needed for continuous hinges. As an example, if a hollow metal door is ordered without hinge preps and a, and a continuous hinge is to be installed, once the hinges are installed, there is no issue with installing the continuous. Once, once hinge preps are installed, there's no issue in, with installing the continuous hinge. Now, the weight bearing per BHMA standard that's built as Hallway Manufacturers Association, uh, this weight bearing pertains to all commercial model, uh, models when we start discussing it. Heavier weights can be carried, I will reiterate this later, on a continuous hinge than that is listed. We are very conservative when we talk about the weight of continuous hinge, when you look at the chart and we say it, it's, it's tested to this certain weight, we're very conservative because we know people are gonna take advantage of that. So if you've got a door that's heavier, then you're looking at the hinge uh, that you wanna install on it, please call, call customer service and they can, and they can uh, uh, let you know if the dual weight is going to be a problem or not. Okay, BHMA 
Uh, this program was developed to establish product classifications through performance testing. Three grades, one, two, and three of product classifications were established for continuous hinges with three weight groups of 150, 300, and 600 for each grade. Grade three being the lowest, grade one being the highest. The single letter, the single, excuse me, the single number is the grade, followed by the door weight. So at 3 150 is a grade three hinge with a maximum weight of 150 pounds. Our continuous hinges are all fire rated. And when you're looking at the geared Pemco hinge, they, ha they all have a fire rating of 90 minutes. However, if you need to, uh, to use it on a three hour opening, you have to use the fire pins. The more cars are all rated for the pin and barrel hinges are all rated for three hours. Now, fire pins on the Pemco aluminum hinges will give you a three hour fighting fire rating on the hinge because it comes standard without the fire pins for an hour and a half. Fire pin applications fall within the guidelines for retrofit assemblies in the field. Also, because of the way fire pinges, fire pins go from the door to the frame, it provides extra security uh, as much as if you would use a, a PSF feature or an SSF feature on your hinges when you need extra security to secure the door. Now, we're gonna get into a few hinge prefix so we'll understand what we're saying when we talk about them. Uh, half surface, HS. HSSF, half surface safety. I'm gonna go over that later on. Uh, HM is half mortise. We also make a, a, a hinge line for the Colony of Tough series. Uh, and so a KFM would be for a Colony or opening, full mortise, OSFM is the offset, and WT is wide throw. We should also have uh, FM, full mortise, FM SLI, full mortise, short leaf inset. That is when the door is inset according to SDI standards. A little bit, it's not flush with the door, with the frame. The FL, SLF stands for full mortar shortly flush. That's when your edge of your door and your frame are flush together. We have the safety, uh, full mortar safety. We have full surface, full surface center pivot full surface balance pivot. We'll be explaining what that is. Your full surface is generally your aftermarket solutions to, to openings that are uh, doors sagging, hinges are bad, or the frame has come out of adjustment. Our hinge finishes, black anodized, clear, dark bronze anodized, gold, painted white, satin nickel. We have various hinge finishes. We're always coming out with more, so you may want to call and check uh, when you desire a certain finish. Our clear and dark bronze anodized is the standard hinge finish. Okay, let's take a look at the Pemco. Uh, the Pemco hinges consist of two full height paired and geared leaves. Each geared leaf rotates evenly from top to bottom, riding on a proprietary polymer blended bearing. Pemco, as you can see, the uh, each, excuse me, uh, 
Each gear leaf rotates evenly from the top to the bottom, riding on a proprietary blended bearing, and the gear leaves and bearings are held together by a full length channel cap. This assembly retains the smooth, clean lines of the door and frame while easily supporting heavy vertical loads. Okay, you heard me use the term proprietary uh, blended bearings. Well, in continuous hinges, if we were looking at the pin and barrel as Malkar uses, we call those the Malkar medical bearings. bearings. And they prevent metal to metal friction, which will eliminate black dust buildup in medical environments. And the tight tolerance keep knuckles concentric with each other. The Pemco, since it is not pin and barrel, it operates on a gear, they use different type of bearings. And the Pemco bearings are called proprietary blended bearings, as you can see right here. Now, the placement of the bearings determines if the hinge is standard, heavy duty, or the extra heavy duty 1100 series. The standard is six inches center to center between the bearings. The heavy duty one is three inches spacing of center to center on the bearings. And the extra heavy duty 1100 series is an inch and a half spacing center to center on the bearings. Now, the types of Pemco hinges. When you have leaves that are concealed by, the mounting, fr by mounting to frame rabbit and door edge, both leaves are concealed. That is called a full mortise hinge. When half of the hinge is mounted to the surface of the door or frame and half of the hinge is mortise, that is called half surface or half mortise. I'm going back and forth between these two because as in hinges, the word after half always applies to the door. So a half surface hinge means it's surface mounts to the door and it will mortise to the frame. A half mortise hinge means that it mortises into the door and surface mounts to the frame. A full surface hinge, as you can see, mounts full surface to the door and frame. These are excellent choices in an aftermarket situation. I'm gonna reiterate that a few times. Uh, when you have sagging doors, sagging frames, uh, broken well plates because you don't need and you don't have to adjust for the door door size because you're not putting anything in between the door and frame. Now, a wide throw when there are special frames with protruding trim work, the pivot of the hinge may need to be further away from the frame. In this instance, a wide throw hinge is necessary. You have to check templates carefully. Wide throw hinges change the opening trajectory of the door and the door has to be undersized accordingly. Swing clear hinge. Swing clear hinge or offset hinge will take the door completely out of the opening. Now, once the door is, if it's a full surface or full mortise swing clear hinge, if it's full mortise, the door has already been sized. If it's full surface, you do not have to resize the door, but it will act as a swing clear hinge and pull that door out of the opening an extra inch if you may need it. Full mortise hinges. These are mainly used for new door applications. For an inch and three quarter door, it's applied to the door rabbit and frame edge to conceal both leaves. When you are ordering this, the door must be undersized 
when ordering. You're able to use these in retrofit applications. However, the dual width must be cut down according to the template. And here we have door undersizing. So on a, uh, if you are gonna undersize the door for a standard four mortise hinge, the door ordering width would be 35 and a half inches. If it was a pair of doors, each door ordering would be 35 and 19 30 seconds. Handing. Handing is always important for either specialized types of hinges, specialized types of closers, locks you're going to want to know the handing. The easiest way to hand is to stand on the side of the door that you put the key in. And if I'm looking at the door and I cannot see the hinges and the door opens in and the hinges are on the left, then it's a left-hand door. If the door opens in and I cannot see the hinges standing on the keyed side of the door and the hinges are on my right, it's a right-hand door. Consequently, if I can see the hinges and the hinges are on my left and the door opens out to me, it's a left-hand reverse. And if the hinges are on the right, it's a right-hand reverse. Now, in new construction, there's a reference slide. Shows you the difference between pin and barrel and full mortise and the Mokar, and, and the, uh, Pem, the Mokar pin and barrel full mortise and the Pemco geared full mortise. Now, we just went through this on the full mortise hinge. As you can see, the bottom, the bottom part, the, the full mortise hinge is designed to use on new doors to get some stability and vandal resistance to an opening. The hinge is designed to properly mount between the door and frame, creating a situation where both leaves of the hinge are concealed. For this reason, the opening needs to be oversized or the door needs to be undersized. The practical choice is to undersize the door. Requesting a door, requesting a, uh, a door opening to be oversized attaches undue consternation to individuals responsible for building the rough opening. As you can see from my slide, the full mortise hinge has a lip that wraps around the edge of the door. The hinge is attached, excuse me, the hinge is designed for an inch and three quarter wooden or hollow metal door. If the door that the hinge is attached to is larger than an inch and three quarter, a different hinge is needed. Also, it's designed for an inch and three quarter door that is also flush mounted with the frame. As you can see, the door and frame are flush mounted. Before we get started on more hinges, Right off the bat, I want to get you thinking about where can we use continuous hinges? They're far superior to butt hinges. They reduce vandalism. They uh, are heavy duty. They take more of a beating. Door will not start to sag. So a lot of places that use these is medical facilities, prisons, arenas, hospitality, Schools, K-12, they're brutal on hinges at doors from students kicking doors. So uh, medical facilities where they're running carts in the doors. So when you're out in the field, when you're looking at the different types of, if you go out to the field and you see different types of um, openings that are sagging, especially old aluminum storefront door openings that's on a on pivots and a lot of times pivots cannot be readily found for that type of opening. You could cut those pivots off and put a continuous geared hinge on it. Now for the different sizes of openings, if you'll notice this opening, we call this the full mortar short leaf inset. Look what I have circled 
and you will see that the door is inset from the frame. In this case, we do make a continuous hinge for it. And this is a foam water short leaf inset. Also, if you look at the bottom of the door, you're able to fit a range of door thicknesses from an inch and three quarter to two and a quarter because you're not constrained by the lip that wraps around the door. So you want to get the uh, foam water uh, flush. You'll see um, this is not the uh, FMSLI. This is a FMSLF where the door is flush. And if the door is not exactly an inch and three quarter, if it's other thicknesses, you won't be constrained by the wraparound piece at the bottom of the hinge. So this hinge is able to fit a range of doors. Also, the full water short leaf flush is excellent for use in bifold door applications to keep the faces of the door flush. Now we'll take a look at the offset swing clear hinges. Uh, we have the offset foam mortise and we have the offset half surface, meaning half of it is mounted to the face of the door. The other half is mounted to the uh, inside of the frame. Like I said, HM or HF, half mortise, half surface, refers to the door. The word after the half always refers to the door. You'd be surprised at how long it actually takes people to realize that. Okay, we're going to take a look at some supplementary hinges here. Um, you see uh, the SP in front of it. This is when you have a variety of situations. Here we go with the uh, supplementary hinge where you want the, uh, where the door is inset. You also want the wraparound at the bottom of the door. The full mortise short leaf inset. Uh, these are designed for door and applications where the hinge leaf may interfere with the weather strip, thermal break, or applied stop of the frame. When dealing with all these above, the same situations applying to full mortise hinges concerning door width and inset requirements also apply to special full mortise hinges. Now, we're going to take a look at a couple of other types of uh, supplementary hinges that you may see in the field. The next three hinges discussed are the hinges for an inch and three eighths door, the safety hinge, and the raised gear hinge. So we've got the full mortise raised gear hinge. This is designed. This is designed for for wood or metal case openings when hinge to be installed is deep on the rabbit. The design of the leaves allows for the hinge to pivot without interference from the cap. Now, I told you before we'd get to what means for when it says a safety hinge. The foam water safety units are designed mainly for new door applications in child care and nursing facilities. Requires extra clearance and conceals both leaves. There's nothing worse than having a child leave their children and old people tend to leave their hands lingering between the door and frame. This will prevent the smashed or broken fingers. Also, it comes in half surface. You can also use this within the half surface in a deep frame application. 
However, once you use it in a deep frame application, it is no longer a safety hinge. Now we have our inch and three eighths door hinge, the FM SLF inch and three eighths. This is mainly used when you need a heavier duty hinge than a residential. But there's some inch and three eighths doors and commercial openings that you don't want to use a residential hinge for. You're going to use the commercial inch and, uh, hinge for an inch and three eighths opening. Because remember we told you the heavier duty a hinge is the placement of the bearings. The, uh, the, res the commercial hinge has more bearings than the residential hinge. That's the difference in it. Like our other four mortise units, the colony hinges are designed mainly for new door applications and are applied to the frame rabbit and door edge to conceal both leaves. We also have some options with the hinges. As pictured here is, we have it's a special modification is available for certain hinges, which provides a hospital tip cap at the top of the gear cap. A 45 angled cut on the gear cap and leaf covers provide a safe opening environment for hospitals and correctional facilities. This is designed, you want to use a hospital tip because it's designed so uh, people cannot hurt themselves by tying a rope around it and hanging themselves from it. We also what's had called the service removable module, the SER. This is when you're going to electrify a hinge. You do not have to get this. You can just electrify the hinge and they'll run the wires through a full hinge. Problem is, if a wire breaks, something goes wrong, you have to take the whole hinge off the door. When you order this, the service model, I don't want to move on real quick. We've got a question. I want to try to answer this. Uh, what finishes are most popular for the continuous hinge? Uh, the most popular uh, finishes are the clear, which would be an aluminum, and the dark anodized, which would be, you may know it as the US 10B finish uh, or, or uh, um, uh, Doronotic finish, but that's the two most popular. So when you install the SER module, the hinge, uh, the hinge is furnished to be installed in three sections, top, middle, and bottom. And the current carrying the cable is installed in the middle because that's the service portion. So, also, this allows the service portion to be put on last where you install the top portion of the hinge, the bottom portion of the hinge, and if they're still moving things in and out and you're worried things are going to get damaged, you can come along last and install the middle part. Now, before, before we leave this, that we also have concealed magnetic monitoring. That's a fancy name for a dual position switch. Concealed magnetic, magnetic monitoring is available with the SCR and the regular wired options. The magnetic monitor supplied with a monitor and an adjustable magnet. It will allow you can you can use it to let you know if the door is open or closed. Okay, this is the fastening kit that comes with the Pemco full surface hinges. The full mortise hinges come with two bags of the machine screws. But these are not screws, uh, the flathead screws are not screws that you can go get at any hardware. Because look at, it has the 1224 thread. However, the head is not a size 12. The head is a size 10. These are specially made screws uh, for the Pemco hinges. We have the self-tapping screws. And also, if you look on uh, to the right with the through bolts, that we will get three through bolts that will mount, excuse me, four through bolts 
that will mount on the door side through the door. We also have self drilling machine screws and wood screws. However, these have to be ordered as an option. They don't come with the hinges. If you're going to order the X series hinges, the X series hinges or have thicker leaves than the traditional geared hinge, but it doesn't require any additional clearance. The X series hinges allow for a deeper cavity for electrical wires when ordering an electrified hinge. Now, the full surface continuous hinges. I have pictured on the left, the gear, pictured on the right, the pin and barrel. If you've got a worn up, if you look at your door, and your door is rubbing, the top part of the door is rubbing against the frame. You're looking at, you got a worn out top hinge. See, because as we discussed at the beginning of the presentation, the top hinge of an opening is responsible for about 70% of the door weight. If the top hinge is constantly going bad, then installing a full surface continuous hinge will alleviate the sagging issue by replacing the hinges and evenly distributing the weight of the door in the opening. We can see this, open the door. Many of you who have replaced hinges or in the hardware business have seen this constantly on commercial buildings where the top portion of the door is hitting against the frame. Due to shifting of a building, the door is now starting to rub against the frame. This can be from a worn out top hinge as discussed or from normal shifting of the ground. By noticing the scrapes on the edge of the door, it's obvious that the door is not closing properly. A full surface continuous hinge will allow you to reposition the door into the frame with the proper gap on the top, bottom, and lock side of the door. And you can see in the two other pictures, the frame from the frame on both of them from either being abused by carts, slamming doors, or just settling of the building is no longer plumb and square. I've seen this many of times. The full surface continuous hinge will allow you to reposition the door into the frame to get you a perfect reveal on all three sides. Now, I wanna explain the three different types because you'll notice that there's three different types of full surface hinges. It's like, why do we have these? Uh, well, the, the full surface hinges are mainly used for retrofit work. The hinges uh, apply to the exposed surfaces of the door and frame. Now, I want you to be aware of something. The, the FS, the full surface, has one pivot point, And the full surface CP has a different pivot point. As you can see, there's a different location of the pivot point on the hinge. Now, if I look over at the FS on the left, you will see that is a type of offset hinge. This will pull the door completely out of the opening, giving you that extra inch of space if you're running carts through it. Be aware though, you may need, if the door has a door closer, you may need to readjust or you will need to readjust the arm or even order a longer door closer arm to accommodate for the for the hinge being offset. Now, the full surface center point is quite different because now this this hinge mimics a butt hinge. So the full surface center pivot, it easily replaces the butt hinge and there's no other adjustment that would be needed to the door closer or, or uh, uh, in case you were installing one of these because it's not offset, it mimics a butt hinge. If you look at the part that attaches to the door, it is wider than the part that attaches to the frame. Many times in commercial openings, the frame is much thinner and you have much, you have much less room to attach to surface mount the leaf of the hinge to the frame. Now, 
if you come over to the full surface balance pivot, it also allows easy replacement and mimics a butt hinge. However, you will notice aesthetically that the full surface balance pivot is the same on both sides. If that is something that is me that is noticeable to you. So that is why you have three different options of the full surface pivot. The next we're going to talk about our behavioral health solutions are pivots that are designed to swing both ways are stops that are allowed to get you into a situation uh open a door in case there's a, a situation that happened on the inside where the person was incapacitated and was not able to open the door we're going to take a look at this in a video in a second so the pemco dshp01 is a full is a, a full swing hinge that allows the door to open and close in either direction. It will allow the door to open 100 degrees in either direction. Marcar also makes the DSH 1000. Now, the emergency release stop is designed so that you're able. You have a single point and a double point stop. That will you have one that will lock in the top in the, in the top of the frame and you have one that will lock in the top and bottom of the frame we're going to see how these work this is what the door stops against in case of an emergency and the door opens in in case of an emergency and somebody could have collapsed and you can't get the door open you can open you can use the tools to open this stop and now open the door out because as you saw, the two hinges swing both ways. Let's take a look at this. Now, let's talk about field cutting the gear hinge. Hinges are non-handed. However, once the hinge is cut, the hinge becomes handed. The measurement does not allow you to cut at least a quarter inch below the last bearing. Then the, the top has to be cut in order that there is a leap at least a quarter inch below the last bearing. So you want to determine handing and hinge length. Mark the top of the hinge and mark a cut line top of the hinge is one eighth inch below header the header is the top of the door excuse me the top of the frame and why do i want the hinge one eighth inch below header is because if i put the hinge one eighth inch below header the hinge will be at the top of the door and i'll have a eighth inch gap between the door and the frame and that's what i am supposed to have okay may cut at least a quarter inch below the bearing never cut through a bearing it's aluminum so you can use circular blade capable of cutting aluminum and you want to remove all bars read your hinge instructions before beginning work you want to examine door for any issues Sagging door, frame alignment, and the big one, 
hardware working properly. Because even though you're not fooling with the hardware on the door at all, if you get finished installing a hinge on the door and all of a sudden something's wrong with the hardware, you're responsible for it. Because there's no way you're really going to be able to tell the people, oh, I did all this work on the door and now the hardware doesn't work. So we want to make sure that the hardware is working properly. So you, we're going to inspect the hinge for the proper length and handing, position the frame leaf of hinge on the frame per instructions. Hinge should be an eighth inch below the header. And we want to mark the center and center points, the top and bottom two holes, drill the pilot holes. We're going to install hinge to the frame using the mounting screws provided. And we're going to swing the hinge to verify that there's no in interference. We'll position the door in the opening using shims to help provide proper clearance at the top and leading edge of the door. Check the gap between the door and frame. We want an, uh, we want an eighth of an inch. Fold hinge over to the door and drill the first two mounting holes at the top and bottom of the door. Cycle the door after two screws are installed. If the door is working properly, install remaining screws. And if you're if you're walking up to this door, and the reason why we're pretty adamant about install measure that the hinge is one eighth inch below the header, that is because if the hinge becomes too short, if the, if you if you cut the hinge and you drop it down on the door, it's still going to work if you're an eighth of an inch or an inch below the top of the door. But the issue is it's not aesthetically pleasing. That's the first thing your eye picks up on at the top of a door is if the hinge isn't at the top. The continuous hinge doesn't go straight to the top of the door. Okay, so we're going to we inspect the hinge for proper length, drill the pilot holes, and we, uh, we install all the remaining screws once we're sure everything is cycling correctly. Okay. Now, that is the end of today's class. I thank you for attending. If you have to ask me a question, it's guy.robinson at asaavoy.com if you would like to send me an email. But I'll still be on for another few minutes uh, if you have any questions to ask on the Q&A portion.